Hey, good morning, everyone. This is Jim Moore, and this is not <coughs> words of encouragement. <laughs> Although I hope these are encouraging words to you. Um, just wanted to take a minute and let you know that uh, we'll be resuming. Uh, we hit the pause button on the program here last week, and uh, we'll be we'll be taking that. To pause off. And so uh, starting tomorrow at 8 o'clock, we'll be back and discussing some of uh, uh, the current events and uh, prophetic uh, wisdom and, of course, the scriptures, because that is our foundation and uh, kind of giving you an update on what's going on with Lynn and I. And uh, yeah, I, I missed uh, being able to do this every morning. It was uh, pretty uh, difficult, would have been pretty nearly impossible for me to do it, at least in my normal time and all that. So we had a great week uh, last week. Really want to appreciate or say thank you and say how much uh, Linda and I appreciate the fact that you prayed for us last week so much. Um, we've been waiting for many years to uh, film the uh, teaching of the Song of Songs. It's a really long uh, teaching, so it took quite a bit of time uh, to get to where we we were able to do that. <clears throat> so we did successfully, thanks to uh, the broadcasting crew at Eagle Mountain Fellowship, we got to get that done. <clears throat> and um, so here's the book again, as I've showed you before, Song of Songs. Yeah, so um, that's going to be made actually into a uh, binder, like a spiral notebook, to where you can go through it. We're also looking to make it into an actual devotional. It's called a devotional commentary, which I'm not even sure is a thing, but it is for this book. And uh, so anyway, we've got some things coming. So we're going to have an audio version, a video version, spiral notebook. <coughs> and, excuse me. All of this is to help you be able to actually go through it and take it, because it's really not the kind of book that you sit down and just read straight through. It's not like that at all. and uh, But it is definitely worth reading all the way to the end, because it's like a big story. It is, it's the story of the, the bridegroom and the bride, bridegroom God, uh, Solomon, uh, and uh, Jesus and the bride, so, which is you. You are the bride, so it's your story. <laughs> so anyway, we, uh, <clears throat> we got that filmed, and we're going to get that out. And then we've got some other things coming too. Uh, one of the things that uh, is coming is a YouTube channel. We're going to be moving into that arena. And uh, yeah, we could use some help in that department if anybody wants to uh, get a hold of us and volunteer, kind of green. I'm uh, sort of behind the curve learning on some of this stuff, but um, but I want to I wanna faithfully utilize the uh, mechanisms that the Lord has put in the earth. I I think sometimes we get to thinking that all of these advancements, technological and otherwise, are, are of the devil because they get used by the devil. Now, there's a saying I learned long ago that would the greater the capacity for good, the greater the capacity for evil. So just because something is being used for something dark doesn't mean that that thing is not the Lord, okay? I, I like to use the basic element of fire, okay? Fire was made by God. God invented fire, <laughs> And, uh, and it, you can use it to cook your food and warm your body and stay alive. Hey, Dean. Or you can burn your neighbor's house down, you know. So if it has the capacity for good, it has the capacity for evil So and vice versa. So at any rate, so these technological advances are meant by the Lord to be used for good. And sometimes they just simply are not. But that doesn't mean that we should shy away from them. It means that we should fully embrace them and utilize them for the glory of the Lord and uh, the spreading of the gospel. So that's my intention. At any rate, again, this is not the regular program. I just wanted to pop on for a minute or two and say hello and uh, say we haven't forgotten you guys. Hi. And uh, we are going to be back on tomorrow morning, Lord willing, and the creek don't rise, as the farmer used to say. And uh, we're down to uh, 17 days to the election. It has happened so quickly, and um, we're still doing our prayer initiative. We're actually going to go a couple days past that, so we're going to the 5th of November, um, and this is an opportunity, you know, I, you hear me say it, and I'm going to keep saying it, the opportunity of a lifetime must be seized within the lifetime of the opportunity, 
And we have an opportunity before these elections happen to sow into prayer. And I know the primary fight is that we tend to think what we do doesn't matter. And of course, nobody in their right mind wants to exercise time and give time to something that really doesn't matter. So we have to choose and decide in our hearts and minds, do we really, uh, do we really believe that my prayer, not just corporate prayer, that matters. Of course, I think it's easier for us to believe when we're in a corporate situation that uh, that, that effort matters. But the truth is my prayer individually matters. And yes, my prayer corporately matters in, in a group of people, in the home group, in the church, whatever. Uh, it all matters. And so... But I want to encourage you uh, to take time, spend extra time. You've got about two weeks left to really sow into this. And, and again, if it didn't make any difference, I wouldn't ask you to, to waste your time. Uh, but it's not. Why? How do I know it's not a waste of time? Because I'll show you my new, newest coffee cup. <clears throat> it's backwards, but it says Rad Dad. Okay. My beloved children are always thinking of me. I love them so much. And, uh, you know, the Bible says, now again, God says this. This is what God says, okay? It's not you preach, it's not me. It's, and it's not what I feel. We're always, we're feelers, right? I mean, so much. One of the popular sayings uh, among the uh, generation today is, well, I really feel. I feel, well, I feel like this. And you hear it all the time. I feel like this. You know what? Sometimes your feelings aren't, aren't accurate. <laughs> you know, I don't feel like when I give somebody a bottle of water, that that makes a big difference, you know? But Jesus said it does. Why? Because he's better than us. He is. He's better than us. And he says, listen, let's translate it into today's vernacular. You give someone a bottle of water. He said, you will not lose your reward. God will remember that. He keeps good books. Yeah. I love his bookkeeping skills. Yeah. He, uh, he remembers the good and he forgets the bad. <laughs> what, kind, what kind of deal is that? I mean, who does that? Really? Come on. Anyway, he said, I'll remember every single time. I have probably forgotten hundreds, multitudes of things that I have done, you know, just to be kind or just to be thoughtful or whatever, or, or in the name of Jesus, that he says, oh, yeah, I remember that. And, and he's going to, every single one of those will have a reward. Now, my point in that is not to rush out and give a bottle of water to someone, although that would be a great thing to do today. But my point is, if that is true, in other words, he gravitated towards something that most of us would consider really insignificant to say, if that matters, what about the things that you in your heart you really know are significant, like prayer? Okay, so I'm saying we have about 17 days to the election. We had 19 days at our prayer initiative. I want to invite you to come. Um, for those of you that can't make it, you can still take part. <clears throat> take. I'm just going to give you a practical suggestion. Make up your mind. Get out a sheet of paper. Write down the next 17 days on the top. The next 17 days. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take one hour a day or a half hour a day. I'm going to pray from 6 to 7 a.m. I'm going to pray from 7 a.m. Yes. Are you listening? Yes. You will have to sacrifice an hour of sleep. <laughs> Oh, horrible, terrible. I can't do it. People say, I just have such a hard time getting up early. You know, I am not a morning person. I've told you that. But really, you know what? You go to bed an hour early, but you're able to get up an hour earlier. It's, you know, and again, what a tiny sacrifice to and the God of the universe is watching. Okay. So anyway, he will, it will. Can I just want to say this? It is the equivalent of your natural vote. I tell people there was like, I guess they're saying like 45 million evangelical Christians did not vote last year. That is shameful. You know, it, it, say, well, it doesn't matter. Well, you know, that's, I think that's a big lie from the enemy. I think that's what the enemy tries to get us to believe that because I, it, my individual, you know, it's more of a mindset. Okay, so I'm not going to go into that, but you need to vote in the natural, and your vote in the spirit, and I'm not just talking about the elections, but generally speaking, the condition of the world, your vote in the spirit is prayer. Prayer is like casting a ballot. When you go to prayer and you, hey Deb, you get on your knees before the Lord and you pray, he is, no, I'm not talking about the world. I'm not talking about your impact in ministry. I'm not talking, I am talking about the God of heaven and earth is watching you pray. 
Now, you may do a good job, you may do a bad job, blah, 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 all of that. I don't care. All I know is the goodness of God will not allow him to make a, not make a record of that and not uh, absolutely. Because again, if God rewards, Brother Esbon, I love you. Thanks for coming Friday, Brother. We love you so much. Uh, if, if God, the good God of heaven, will reward you for giving someone a bottle of water, he will definitely reward you for prayer because in my estimation of things, a bottle of water is probably not quite on the same level as prayer. <laughs> Come on. I'm just telling you, you I, I want you to recognize one of the chief things the enemy tries to convince you of. He tries to convince you your prayer, cast in your ballot in the spirit, doesn't matter. That's all he's got to do to get you to quit praying is to convince you it doesn't matter. So I'm trying, I'm here trying to convince you it does matter. Not, not because you do it so well or you do it so consistently or you're so eloquent or you know all the right things to pray about. No, 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 no. But because God is good. It matters because he is good. Okay? Not because of you, but because of him. And yes, there are better ways to pray than not to pray, blah, blah, blah. We get all that. But it is not about you that your prayers matter. It is about the goodness of God, the righteousness of God. He is too just not to let your prayers matter. You get what I'm saying? So somewhere along the line, uh, I, and I heard something here today, and then I'm going to wrap it up because, again, I don't want to take a long time. But uh, I heard something yesterday that, that really, really struck my heart, that about a third of Christians today, since the um, since coronavirus, are they, most of them started out online churches or going to church, and it's Sunday, right? And doing all that. And now about one third of those who were faithfully either going to the few churches that were open or, um, or at least being online are not even doing that anymore. Listen, you know, we do internships. And I put a link on this because uh, I just can't help but put something on there. And I'll tell you about the link here before I sign off. But we used, uh, we've done internships at the House of Prayer in the past, and, and one of the prime reasons that we do the internships is to help develop the kind of nearness to God that you've always wished you had, the kind of nearness to the Lord that you struggle with. And we deal with a lot of mindsets, and one of those primary mindsets, you know, a lot of the reasons that we tell ourselves why that will never happen for us, or we say we believe it and it just never, we never move forward. So I want you to understand intimacy with God and nearness to God is a very attainable goal. It is a, a totally, God wants it more than you do. And why would he say you can have this and then not give you the opportunity to do it? He will definitely do that. But we battle our own mindsets. I just taught the Song of Songs. And when he came to her and said, invited her to intimacy, she started listing all the reasons why she couldn't do it. And we do the same thing. Don't condemn yourself. Don't beat yourself up. But it's, it's still true. Okay, it's still true. And so one of the ways that we get to that place of intimacy is we have to address those mindsets. And there are many of them. Okay, and I don't have time to go into them. But one of them is this. So we do these internships and we invite people to come and we would require them to uh, take a season away from their job to pay their bills ahead of time, to make sure they weren't in debt. All these things to eliminate distractions. That was the goal. And so once they eliminated those distractions, they would come for usually, I don't know, one to three months, something like that. And they would spend, uh, I don't, you know, different times, eight to 12 hours a day, depending on the internship, uh, they're just focusing on the Lord, not in the prayer room 12 hours straight, but they would pray for a few hours, study a few hours, and it was a greenhouse, and it was meant to be a greenhouse. And so they would go after this. Now, here's the mindset. How we tell ourselves something, okay? Please don't, please don't get offended at what I'm going to say, and don't shut me up, but listen, listen to this. Here's what we do. We tell ourselves that the excuses that we give for not drawing near to the Lord so he can run near to us are, are completely le legitimate. And sometimes they are, but lots of times they're not. And so here's one of the big ones. One of the big ones is they would be really excited. So imagine yourself a 20-something, 30-something, 40-something, whatever, and you're going to go, you're going to get this chance to really come aside and be with the Lord and really go deep in the Lord. What would you think about that? Most of them, they're, when you talk, really excited. Oh, I'm so excited. This is going to be so awesome. You know, and people tell us, you guys are so lucky. You get to spend all that time with the Lord. First of all, we don't just do that. Okay, but anyway, that's another story. But they're really excited. Okay, it's really excited. This is going to be so awesome. And uh, 
And what happens is when they come into that environment and they have no distractions and they start coming in and sitting before the Lord, at first it's super, super exciting. Oh my gosh, this is so, this is the greatest thing in the world. Day one, day two, day three. About a week in, they're starting to go, you know, I, I don't. I don't really like this very much. <laughs> They're like, wow, um, how come I'm having such a hard time? How come I'm so bored? Man, this isn't nearly as nice as I thought. The, the, the concept, that what, what that says, okay, the, the, the idea behind that is that now they're suddenly realizing that they didn't want to spend time with the Lord as much as they wanted to. The concept behind that is that we tell ourselves the reason we don't spend more time with the Lord, the reason we don't pray, the reason you can't get out that sheet and say 14, 17 days, you know, uh, that I have left until this pivotal point in our nation. The reason I can't do that is because of this and because of this. And, and I would if I could. I would if I could. And then when you can, you realize, wait a minute, there's another reason why I don't. It's because I struggle. It's because I war against my flesh. It's because when I get into that place where, where I finally do have time with the Lord, uh, I don't enjoy it that much. And again, I'm not saying this for everybody, but lots of times. So we tell ourselves reasons. Now, I'm saying all that to say since coronavirus has happened, and uh, on this link, you're going to listen to a man testify about that. It's the same kind of a thing. A lot of people went into it and decided it was the Lord for them to rest and to take time. And it, and it probably was for a lot of them. But what they found, why are a third of those people not even, they've gone back now on their commitment to prayer, gone back on their commitment to be in the house of the Lord or to sit and whatever. And I know you guys haven't because you're extra special people. But the idea is what they talk, it's the same thing. There are other reasons why we avoid coming into the presence of the Lord or avoid going to the house of the Lord or whatever. It's so we want to address those. We want to actually, the best thing in the world is to get into that place of prayer and just remove, yes, the distractions and say, Lord, I want to wrestle through with my flesh. Uh, turn on the worship music, soak, okay? Pray in the Spirit. Here's what you don't want to do. You want to break that cycle of prayerlessness? Don't read your Bible. <laughs> I'm going to get emails for that one. But here's what we do. When we start struggling prayer, the first thing we do is grab our Bible because it's a lot easier to read. And I love the Bible. If you don't know that by now, <laughs> oh my gosh, I am a huge proponent of the Bible. That's one of my soapboxes I get on all the time is you have got to start reading your Bible again. But... I would tell you this, and you won't hear this from, from many, but I'll tell you this. Do not just immediately grab your Bible when your flesh starts wrestling and you feel bored. I'm going to teach one of these days on enjoyable prayer because there is a way to have enjoyable. There's a way that will make you run to the place of prayer and fellowship with Jesus. And, and I'm not saying you can't fellowship with him through your word. You absolutely can, and you should. That should that's an, one of the ways to really get a lot out of the Bible is to have this this concept that you're going to sit down and fellowship with the Lord. So people say, well, what's the difference then as long as you're fellowship with the Lord? Be, well, ask yourself that. Why do you struggle when, when it's just you and the Lord and you're trying to talk to him and you're trying to and struggle more than when you open up your Bible? Okay, so I'm just saying, press through. Jacob wrestled with the Lord all night long. And can I say it this way? Really, what he was doing is wrestling with his own flesh, okay? We wrestle with our flesh. We are undisciplined lots of times. And I know that's not, you know, sound very encouraging, but it's the truth. And to me, truth is always encouraging. Amen? So anyway, to say all that, I just want to, again, I'm just going to wrap it up. We've got, oh, what is it? Uh, what did I say? 14 days, 17 days, 17 days until election. Now, let me just end on kind of a little bit sobering note here. Our nation is going through something it's never gone through. Really the whole world, but let's talk about America. We're going through something historically we have never gone through. Not even in the American Revolution or the Civil War have we gone through uniquely the same thing we're going through right now. And trust me when I tell you, you want a prophetic word, I'm going to give it to you right now. It is not going to go easy in the, uh, at two weeks from now. 
there will be unrest and there will be a lot of challenges happening. I'm not saying that to be a doomsdayer because I know that's when we don't like something, we just tag gloom and doom onto it. And with that phrase, that phrase gloom, doom, and then all of a sudden nobody wants to listen anymore. It's going to be challenging for if it's not for you and your peaceful environment, and I pray that your environment will be peaceful. Trust me, there are going to be a lot of people in this country that do not have that. And you should be and I should be praying for them. So it is time to pray. It is time to uh, prepare our hearts and just say, Lord, whatever happens, I want to walk with you. And people ask me about natural preparation. Should I prepare? Um, you know, because the, the people that are always trying to predict what's going to happen, and I, I don't disrespect that, but they're saying a lot of things all the way from nothing. It's going to be a non-event, like, like uh, what was that? Uh, uh, the two, When we went over into the 2000s, I forget what we called that. But anyway, and it's going to be a non-event to those who say it's going to be pretty much the end of America. I, I think what will happen is... And this does, this is about the elections. I don't like to just go political all the time because this channel, this this message time is primarily scripture. But I do think it's important that we acknowledge that, that whoever wins the election, there's going to be a backlash to that. So if uh, Donald Trump uh, does not, or if he does win, if Donald Trump, which I know a lot of Christians believe he will, I'm not going to tell you my opinion on that, so sorry. <clears throat> but uh, if he does win the election, uh, those who oppose his presidency and his leadership of our country, uh, you know, to varying degrees, are going to Y2K, Y2K non-event, okay? This is not going to be that. I, I, will, I will tell you from, you know, I, I have a, a pretty... I think I could pretty much guarantee this is not going to be like that. Okay, it's not going to be the end of the world either, but it's not going to be nice. Um, anyway, so, uh, you know, the backlash will be serious. It will be serious, absolutely serious. And um, and perhaps even more than we think. And again, I don't want to predict that. I'm certainly not prophesying that. I, I prophesy peace. I prophesy joy. But I we also have to... As, as believers in Jesus, we need to know the truth. We don't need to just declare what we hope will happen or what we want to happen. Although that's part of what declaration is about, is saying this is what the Lord wants. Anyway, so <clears throat> if, um, if Donald Trump does not win, then it will probably be some level of relative peace for a while. There'll be some backlash, but probably not as serious. And uh, But then there are going to be some repercussions. Things will turn around and some of the good that has been done uh, will be undone. So anyway, <clears throat> not trying to go into all that. I just simply want to say pray. That's, that's my deal right now. That's what I'm saying. You really need to prepare your heart and prepare your life. I, I believe one of the things that's being said right now that's a possibility is some food shortages. So, you know, again, you remember, I was actually in the store and I promise I'll stop right here. I was in the store uh, yesterday, <clears throat> and um, I was reading an article uh, afterwards. Actually, I read the article after I went to the store, but I had this funny feeling when COVID first hit, um, and it hadn't become this monstrous thing that really took over the mindset of the people. I was in a store, and there were not runs on stuff. They were not, you know, the long lines. It was before all that. It was right at the very beginning, really about a week before things really ratcheted up. I went to a store, and there was this funny feeling. I was in the store and there was this anxiousness and I'm like, why? Because I'm a feeler and I'm like, why? And, and it, it seemed to me that, I mean, it wasn't obvious, but the people just seemed like they were kind of sort of in a hurry and just kind of almost like this, this, this low level fearfulness. And I remember coming out and telling Linda, I said, well, it's just really funny the way it felt in the store today. And, uh, and she said, well, you know, maybe... Maybe people are starting to get concerned. And sure enough, by the next week, it was full on toilet paper rush. Everybody remember toilet paper. <laughs> so I felt that yesterday again. I walked into the store. There's no big, massive, you know, panic happening. But it was just the building of this anxiety again. So what am I saying? I'm saying you would be smart to get ahead of the curve, Okay. Rather than, because lots of you, myself included, I found myself in a position where I was like, oh my gosh, I don't have toilet paper. I don't have some of these things. Hey, listen, don't let people tell you, the people that accuse you of being fear-mongering just because you want to be responsible, don't, don't you take that on. 
Okay, if the Lord is impressing you to get a few extra cans of soup or to get some toilet paper, then just do it. Don't be afraid. Don't don't go into panic mode. Okay, but also be responsible. You know, we don't tend to live in the balance of things very well. And uh, so anyway, you you just pray, ask the Lord what you're supposed to do. And again, if if you haven't decided to do, you know, uh, a little more than you normally would do, if you're just doing a routine like you've always done, you know, there's an opportunity here for you to sow into. And um, so I just want to encourage you. All right, I've talked too long. I always do. I've, I've got so much to say. Thank you for your prayers. Watch the link. Uh, this is uh, Jeremiah Johnson. <clears throat> Somebody said, who's your favorite preacher? I tell them I don't have a favorite preacher. Jesus, maybe. I like a lot of them, almost all of them, because I feel like <clears throat> any Bible-believing preacher has got good things to say. Uh, I am not the guy who finds the one thing that this guy says, or maybe they're too soft-spoken, or maybe they're too hard-spoken, maybe they're too aggressive, maybe they're not aggressive enough, maybe they smile too much, maybe they don't smile too much, you know, maybe they hit on one subject and not enough on this one. Oh, come on, friends, let's grow up, really, let's grow up. Let's learn to eat the meat and spit out the bones. So I think Jeremiah has some really good things to say, and if you'll listen to this message with an open heart, yeah, you're going to hear a couple of things you don't like. I think I do every time I hear somebody preach. I listen to my own stuff. I go back and listen to my own message and I go, well, that was kind of dumb. <laughs> Come on, guys. Let's, I'm serious. Let's get over ourselves, all right? You don't have, we don't have to take a hardcore stand on every all right, single thing. Anyway, listen to it. Listen with an open heart. At least listen to the first 45 minutes of it. I believe there's insight that very much goes in line with what I've been hearing and maybe what you've been hearing too. And uh, and then share it if you feel you should. So I love you guys. It's been wonderful just talking to you, catching up again. Uh, <clears throat> words of encouragement will be on, Lord willing, tomorrow at 8 o'clock. Oh, by the way, some people want to know about our motor home. Uh, please continue to pray. We've raised a little over half of that. Uh, we actually had to... Um, uh, get some money. We had to take out a, a loan uh, so that we could um, cover the rest that we had not raised because they had to get it off the lot. And it was, we had things shift on us pretty significantly. And we were like, ah, we don't have enough time to raise the rest of the money. And, uh, but God provided a way for someone who, you know, loaned us the finances, but we still have about $3,500 to raise for that. And uh, if you want to help with that, <clears throat> Facebook message me and I'll tell you how you can do that. But pray. Mostly I just want you to pray. Um, we know it's the Lord, so it's actually in our possession now. Uh, but we need to finish raising that money or else we're going to be straddled with indebtedness. So love you guys. God bless you. Watch the link. Have a great day today. You know, if you cannot make it to church, if there's no way that it's open, uh, find a thing to sit down and listen to today. Uh, there's a lot of good ones out there. Maybe your church is online. There's there's a lot of good, good ministry going on right now uh, online. So God bless you. We love you. And I'll see you tomorrow morning.